Hello all, welcome back to my channel. I hope you have watched my first two videos on regional regulatory ancillary services. In my this video, I would be going a one step further discussing about the new amendment which have been brought in the field of ancillary services. This regulation have been issued in the month of May 2021. Till now, they have not been uh, implemented, but the guidelines have been laid on what would be the objective which the government want to achieve or which the CRC want to achieve through these regulations and what would be the new things which may come up in the time follows. So without wasting much time, in this video I would be discussing about the various aspects such as such as objectives, definitions and interpretations of the terms which have been used in this uh, document, the scope of the document, the different type of ancillary services which the government is planning to uh, is allowing basically and in this video I would be also covering upon the RGUMA part that is the first of the ancillary services which the government want to use. So without wasting much time, let's begin with the what is the objective of this document. The regulations aim to provide a mechanism for procurement through administered as well as the market based mechanisms or deployment and payment of ancillary services for maintaining the grid frequency close to 50 Hz and restoring the grid frequency within the allowable brand as specified by the grid code and also the document or the focus would be in relieving the congestions in the transmission network to ensure smooth operation of power system and safety and security of the grid. So in short the regulations purpose is to ensure that there would not be any uh, congestions, the grid frequency remains 50 Hertz, the grid should be remain stable and there should not be any disturbances allowed and if there would be disturbances there would be some mechanisms which will take care of these disturbances so that these disturbances does not propagate. So now I will talk about what are the various definitions and the meaning of the terms which have been used in this document. So, uh, while I will talk about the definition, as most of the terms which I have been using in my this video, I have already covered most of my uh, terms in my last two videos so I would not be repeating them and uh, regarding the new terms which may come up in this video I would be discussing only these terms so the first thing which I want to talk about is called AGC signal the AG signal, AGC signal means the automated signal generated from the node agency through which the generation of ancillary services provider is adjusted basically it means that the ancillary service provider would have the no control on his generation or I would say uh, rather no would be an extreme word I would say the grid has the uh, option to increase 10 megawatt, 20 megawatt, 30 megawatt or decrease 10 megawatt, 30 megawatt of any number okay. as per the operating uh, maximum operating capacity of that unit so the grid can basically up and down that unit in respect to maintain the frequency so the signal which is being generated would be called the AGC signal. 
now the next term which is in this series is the ancillary services the ancillary services in relation to power system operation means the services necessary to support the grid operations in maintaining power quality reliability and security of the grid and includes primary use of ancillary services that is rgmo the secondary use of ancillary services that is agc so the next term which need explanation is the area control error the area control error means the instantly difference between a control area net actual interchange of energy in relation to the net schedule interchange of energy taking into account the effects of frequency bias and corrections of metering and measuring instruments so if you have some area control error then only the signal will be generated that this particular uh, area needs correction which in terms comes in the form of a agc signal now going to the next slide now the next term is ancillary services capacity obligation basically is a capacity signal for dispatch by the nodal agency under secondary regulatory, uh, regulatory ancillary services or the capacity produced procured by the nodal agency under the tertiary regulatory ancillary services basically if you have opted for ancillary services then the obligation of the energy to be provided as signaled by the nodal agency such as nldc or rldc so that obligation is called ancillary services obligation now coming to the next term that is automatic generation control or agc which is basically a mechanism through which the generation of the srs provider in a control area is automatically adjusted in response to the secondary control signal it means that for a 660 megawatt plant this limit suppose a limit of 35 megawatt is provided i would explain it bit more when i discuss in the next slide or the next video about the agc but till then understand that based on the unit size a plus and minus signal is generated that is the maximum change which a grid can do in the operator unit load set point and that change is basically called an agc that is the generation control system is automatically is in the hand of a grid now now the next term is commitment charge that is the amount payable to the trs provider for the up in generation as cleared in day ahead market or in the real time market as the case may be but not instructed for dispatch for example if a unit is if a unit is agreeing that it will provide the required ancillary services as and when required then a commitment charge is paid to that particular unit as per the day, dam that is day ahead market or as per the real term market now what is compensation charge so the another term is the compensation charge means the price declared by an srs provider other than the generating station for participation in srs means if i am offering to participate in secondary reserve ancillary services that is agc then i have been given a compensation charge okay so that extra support which i give to the grid will be compensated to me in the form of a compensation charge so about the charge i will discuss when i will talk about the agc in my next video now next thing now the all the uh exchange of money which either in the form of a compensatory charge or in the form of a commitment charge basically settle through the division and the ancillary services pool account which is also called 
basically a DSM account. In the DSM account, the money which has been collected through AGC or the commitment which has been paid through AGC is actually settled up. So the new development which has been occurred in this uh, ancillary service is that the energy storage in relation to the electricity system has been included as a facility where electrical energy is converted into any form of energy and which can be stored and subsequently reconverted to electrical energy as and when required. That is the electrical source basically storage like batteries or any pumped storage or any form of storage may act as an ancillary services. The government has provided a note for that also. Now frequency response characteristic which is the final term which I want to discuss in this. The frequency response characteristic means the automatic and sustained change in the power consumption by load output of the generator that occurs immediately after changing the load generation balance of a control area and which is in direction to the opposed in changing frequency. Now, I will talk about the scope. The scope of the document is that these regulations shall be applicable to regional entities including entities having energy storage resources and demand side sources qualified to provide an ancillary services and other entities as provided in these regulations. So what are the ancillary services? Basically we have three to four categories. The first is the primary industries of ancillary services that is RGMO. The second is the secondary is of ancillary services that is AGC. The third is the tertiary reserve ancillary services which has been just introduced in this and fourth is any such regu uh, regulatory ancillary services as may be specified in the grid code. Now let's talk about the different type of ancillary services which we have. In this is the first one is the primary reserve ancillary services that is RGMO. So when I am talking about the RGMO I need you to understand two things one is called modify sliding pressure and other is valve open condition. So though these are the two things which require a detailed explanation which I would not be covering in this particular video lecture. I would be covering them in my next video all uh, next video only so but what basically RGMO says that in case the frequency drops from 50 Hertz and below a generator has to ramp up a generation up to 5% for every 0 0.03 Hertz down in the grid frequency even after five minutes if the frequency doesn't recover then the generator should bring back its generation after an interval of 10 minutes if required the generator may go up to the ceiling limit of 105% of MCR of the unit having a regard to this machine capability. So the RGMO basically provides the instantaneous signal to from the generator in order to stabilize the grid frequency. So that's all in RGMO. And I will be discussing further more regarding the modified sliding pressure and the wall open condition in my next videos. So till then, good night. And if you like the video, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.